TL. I've asked Charlie Brennan from KMOX Radio and Donnie Brook to be on because I said if we're going to talk local history, and we'll have the historians, we'll have the STL 250 planners, but I want to talk to a guy who, uh, uh, Charlie, I kind of see you as a champion of, of local history. Um, is, is that a good 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 tag for you? Well, I don't know about champion because that <laughs> that indicates success or something. But uh, you know, when I first moved here from Boston in 1988, I, I didn't think that St. Louis had any history. I mean, how could it compare to the Athens of America, as we <laughs> called ourselves? But the more I was walking around St. Louis, I found out here's where Lindbergh asked for his money. Here's where Dred Scott sued. Here's where Mark Twain lived and worked. And I was just blown away by all the history of the city of St. Louis. But also, I think to some extent, the lack of awareness or I wouldn't even say pride in that. Well, it, it's true. I mean, we always considered ourselves a beer town for sure, baseball town, right? You know, but. Uh, World's Fair Town. World's Fair Town, but sure. history. You know, when I first moved here, there was not even a plaque outside the old courthouse in downtown St. Louis on any of the four sides indicating that that's where Dredd and Harriet Scott sued for their freedom in 1846. And Ken Burns of PBS says that's the spark that started the flame or, or the, the bonfire of the Civil War. I mean, started in our own backyard and we had not marked it. Well, there's a plaque there now and a statue of uh, Dredd and Harriet and we're making progress, you know, in areas I, like that. I'll give you another example. My, my older brother came and He's, he's, he's a history guy. He goes to libraries. He does a lot of reading. He came to St. Louis, found the City Hall beautiful. He's looking for the walking tour. Yeah. He's looking for the walking tour map. There's no walk. Now, this was a few years ago. Maybe mm -hmm. there is one now. And he was just shocked that a city this old wouldn't have a walking tour. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's true. You know, we, we've got a long way to go there, but uh, Chicago has probably two, three tours leaving every hour at the you know downtown location or something. But here, here's the deal, I think, and, and you, some of your guests have taken a look at this earlier. Unlike some of our cities and towns in this country, like maybe, maybe Boston or Plymouth or uh, Philadelphia or Rhode Island, some of these cities were started by people who were seeking freedom from religious or political persecution. St. Louis was founded for fur trade, so it was just a place to make money. You know, legacy and exceptionalism really wasn't part of our outlook. And then, as some of your previous guests have said, some of our history has been so divisive, like the Civil War and segregation, I think a lot of people have wanted to kind of forget it. And I do think there's this sense of, rather than saying, and, and you know, this was, if, if that's part of our history, that's part of our history. Let's talk about yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's deal with it, right? Yeah. And, and uh, what kind of response? Oh, wait a minute. Before I get to there, you've got a book out about St. Louis history. I do. It's called Amazing St. Louis, 250 Years of Great Tales and Curiosities. And it's kind of a rah-rah, greatest hits of St. Louis history. Good bedside book. I have to tell you, it's a good bathroom okay. book. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a page yeah. or two Absolutely. Uh, of, of really, really interesting stories. I wonder the response you have gotten over the years of pointing these things out to people um, who maybe should have been doing it all along. Oh, well, everyone's really proud to know that St. Louis had so many great inventions, for example, and so many firsts, and so many people here whose actions changed the world, whether it was Jimmy Doolittle or Butch O'Hare in World War II, or Mark Twain with literature, and Chuck Berry with rock and roll, Dred Scott with the Civil War, uh, and, and the list goes on and on. And so, so when people hear about that, they go, yeah, St. Louis is a place where people you know, changed the world, made a difference, and they feel proud of that. And that's my whole point. If you learn about your history, you'll feel proud of your region, and you might also be inspired by the actions of others to do great things like they did. So uh, how do you sense how STL 250 is going? I mean, you get a lot of phone calls. Yeah. People are talking to you all the time. Do you get a sense that it's, it's catching on? Because like I, I said to Aaron a few weeks ago, people were saying, really? I didn't, I didn't know. Well, I didn't hear about that. Uh, among other things, I think that the uh, birthday cakes is a great idea where people can use the app, find the birthday cakes, and then learn more about the area that those 
birthday cakes mark. So people have kind of, kind of there's a little learning curve there, because to be honest with you, I don't have my app yet, Jim, <laughs> but I'm going to get that and use that. And I yeah. think that's kind of cool, combining history with this new technology. I think it's going to be really handy. You like history, I like history. Neither of us was born here, by the way. Right, that's and, right. And I think that's an advantage, because you see things that, that people drive right by and, and they don't notice. What about this idea? And, and I'm not saying that kids aren't learning history. I know at the old courthouse, kids are going down to the old courthouse, Missouri History Museum, they do things. There are things going on yeah. that where kids are being taught history. Do you get the sense that, that we ought to do a better job of yeah. that? Yeah, uh, definitely. For example, uh, my kids study and they memorize The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Still? Is, really? Yeah, it, it's great. Yeah. G good poetry. I, I, I love it. Yeah. But we have two great poets that uh, who actually you could, you could memorize the poetry as a kid in, in grade school of T.S. Eliot. Maya Angelou, Eugene Field. I mean, we've got some local poets whose literature is recognized worldwide for sure. I'm not sure I want to memorize T.S. Eliot. Well, I'm not. I, I think that you might you enjoy you doing that. Don't forget. Maybe the uh, cats thing. The I'm cats, not... <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I tell you what, this is one of those things that I think, and, and I don't, you know, I, I, I love living here, but I've often, often felt that, for example, there's no, there's, there's sort of an embarrassment about Tennessee Williams. Oh yeah. Well, not only as Tennessee opposed Williams. to pride of of, yeah. of the rec the fact that he was recognized as a writer, he was mentored here as a writer. He had a terrible family life, but St. Louis f sort of feels embarrassed. Like you know, let's not talk about that. I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, well, first of all, because of his, uh, I think he was gay, and that that bothered people back in the day. But he was, I think, the most important playwright of the second half of the 20th century. Won two Pulitzer prizes. Uh, Glass Menagerie is running on Broadway right now. Now there is a bust of Tennessee Williams, but that's in the Central West End at Euclid and McPherson. The big Tennessee Williams Festival every year, you're right, is in New Orleans. And there are some others that we've failed to recognize. Chuck Berry is one. Yes, he had some issues with the law for sure, but Chuck Berry invented rock and roll, and he still lives and works here. And then Miles Davis. We finally got Miles Davis his uh, statue uh, last summer, right, in Alton. Right. But, you know, Nice France had a statue of Miles Davis <laughs> about 50 years ago or something, a long period of time. So I'll ask you what I, what I, what I asked uh, Aaron and the other folks. At the end of the year, what does a successful birthday celebration look, to, look like to you? Oh, I think if just people start realizing the great history in St. Louis, I think we'll have made some real inroads. If people become proud of our region, start thinking of it as a historic area where great people walk these same sidewalks and their actions made the world a better place, changed the world, I think we'll be heading in the right direction. Great. Charlie Brown.